All right, Fun Nation, welcome back to another edition of Behind the Bumpers. Today, we've got the two-time champion, 469 Las Gorillas, here at the Wayne State District event. My name is E. Lockman, and I'm here with Maxim, Sam, and Marcus to talk about their innovative elevator, intake systems, and all the software that goes into this awesome robot. So we're going to hear all this and more coming up on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. For over 100 years, Kettering University has offered a better education because from day one, that education has been built on hands-on co-op learning. Kettering's impressive alumni network includes founders, presidents, CEOs, and front runners who have a reputation for transforming industries with their resolute leadership. Apply today at kettering.edu slash first. Earn up to a $5,000 sponsorship for your team or $2,000 individual prize when you provide a video submission to the Altair Global Student Contest at altair.com slash contest. You can build better robots faster with Altair tools and provide multiple video submissions for the contest. Download Altair tools for free. Scan the QR code or go to altair.com slash contest for further details. All right, first up, we've got Sam to talk about their innovative intakes and double intakes. Let's see it. Yes. So our intake is comprised of three components mainly. Our coral end effector, that which is right here. Um, shout out to uh, Rembrandt for the inspiration on our design. We uh, took much inspiration from that. But we also have our, um, our uh, encoders that sense the, uh, the coral as they go in. And we can give a demonstration of that now. All right, from this stage, uh, we flip over afterwards into our scoring positions when we get to the reef, um, and that can be shown here as well. And then we um, do all components, or all levels, which is L1, L2, L3, and L4, is all use the same system. Awesome. So talk about this ramp as well. It's a yes. very interesting half ramp that we're seeing. Yes, correct. So we wanted to, to be as light as possible as there were the rate, uh, weight constraints with the new um, weights in the rules. So we actually used um, corrugated um, polycarb and max composite to really lighten up our, um, our human player intake, as well as still making it um, quite structural and, um, and effective. Now to continue to the algae end effector, we um, have two different ways of using it, either off the floor or off the reef. Um, and we can demonstrate that as well with the algae over here. Um, if you can grab that algae, Maxim. Uh, yep. If you no, it's uh, propped up, yeah. There you go. And then that gets brought up, and then we're able to score either um, in the processor by outtaking like that, or lift up the elevator and score in the barge. Awesome. All right, now to go more into the elevators, we have Maxim. So our elevator is a continuously rigged elevator. We have three stages. What makes our robot uh, particularly special is that under this coral stage at the bottom is an algae stage, which has a motor to be independently controlled from the rest of the elevator. And this allows us to be able to score the coral on higher stages than Sonic on uh, L4, but we're also able to move the algae stage um, a bit lower in order to be able to uh, take out the algae from the reef, basically. All and right. we're um, tracking the movement of the elevator through encoders in the motor. Um, under here, this right here is the motor that basically allows us to move the algae uh, carriage independently from it. It's hooked up to this chain, which attaches to the carriage right here. And in the movement of the elevator, you can see that the algae moves um, separately from the rest of the elevator. All right, let's see a little elevator demonstration while we're at it. So this would be our L2 position. This would be our L3 position. And all the way up here is our L4. We can also go up even higher to barge. We have about this distance here to work with to extend even further. Yep, so this is an example of where our algae would move. Um, if you come down here, we're running the elevator for two Krakens that are going into a gearbox. We took inspiration from uh, Team High Tide for this, so thank you and shout out to them. 
Uh, we're running this piece of rubber right there in order to avoid any slamming of the elevator, which, you know, uh, puts extra wear on any of the parts. All right, now we got Marcus to talk about all the software that goes into this awesome robot. Marcus, take it away. So, our software this year was heavily inspired by 254's organization. We really liked their organization team, so we split it up into the most basic concepts, uh, our motors, our sensors, all as generic ideas. That way, we were able to program all of the robot pretty much before it was built to ensure that we could test our logic. And then once the robot was built, we could fill it in with all the specific hardware details, such as, is this a Neo? Is this a Kraken or a Falcon? And hence, we were able to have a much better top-down level of what was going on. And then let's talk about all the hardware that makes it work. <laughs> Gorgeous. This is our chassis, and this was heavily inspired by uh, Open Alliance Team Maker Robotics. And they have a drop chassis, about three inches nominally. However, in the middle, they inserted a brain pan or a belly pan where you mount all your electronics to. We took this approach to keep CG as low as possible, but have plenty of accessibility and plenty of space for electronics. So we have our PDP here. We have our thrifty bot mitochondria here. And pretty much all our power cables are run underneath between the top belly pan and the bottom thicker structural belly pan. Awesome. Then on top, we have our important stuff like our Rio, our um, Canivore, and our networking switch. Cool. And then going further into software, uh, one big change we took this year is we used Mechanical Advantage's uh, Danger Scope, and we're logging all of our data through their application, and it becomes very useful to see all the data after the match. Um, as for other stuff we're doing, in our dashboard, we're using the Elastic Dashboard, and this basically enables uh, while we're driving, we can see if the robot thinks it's correctly in place. So we know if we've set it up such that I can see April tags. Cool. And then another key implementation we've used in our autonomous is rather than using Pathfinder, we found that Pathfinder is an accurate mode. And the reason why this is, is I believe they split the grid of the whole field into 0.3 meter squares. And that's more or less the amount of precision that it has over this big area. And while this works for many teams, one of the things we wanted to do is be able to customize where exactly um, the robot gives up or decides to really correct back onto its path. So we've implemented our own, so similar to Pathfinder, but it mainly uses um, using a PID controller to reach a point. And then we can point, put many points along a path in order to give us our own path, but just that we can customize when have we gone far enough. So we use this in our autonomous when we say, if we're within this tolerance, then is when we can score the core roll. Cool. And then we go on to the next part. All right, Fun Nation, this has been another thrilling edition of Behind the Bumpers. Thanks so much, Team 469 Las Gorillas. We wish them the best of luck at this Wayne State event, and we will catch you guys in the next edition of Behind the Bumpers. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. Earn up to a $5,000 sponsorship for your team or $2,000 individual price when you provide a video submission to the Altair Global Student Contest at altair.com contest. You can build better robots faster with Altair tools and provide multiple video submissions for the contest. Download Altair tools for free, scan the QR code, or go to altair.com contest for further details. For over 100 years, Kettering University has offered a better education because from day one, that education has been built on hands-on co-op learning. Kettering's impressive alumni network includes founders, presidents, CEOs, and frontrunners who have a reputation for transforming industries with their resolute leadership. Apply today at kettering.edu first.